In this video, we're going to be taking a look at another fun little project um, here in CorelDRAW and recreating a bitmap with our EasyStone macro. Now, we're going to be using two different macros. We're going to be using our EasyStone, and then we also have our Easy Guides macro as well. So let's take a look at the image that we're going to be creating. Recently, had a customer who had made a special request for a Bible image, and I didn't have one already. And so, the first thing I always do is go to Google Images and see what inspires me. Now, the customer would like the Bible image to be about seven inches, SS10 stones. And so that right there will kind of limit us as to what kind of design we're going to create. Like this Amen design right here, very detailed design, probably would not look very good in rhinestones. So we need something kind of simple. You know, like this open book, very classic Bible, right? Um, that might be an option. Um, and we know like a clip art like this where the book, you have this little ribbon tail and a cross on the cover. That's kind of classic, iconic uh, Bible images. I actually like this one as I was creating the design. I like the, the way this Bible was positioned. I also like the flowers sitting on top of the Bible. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, ultimately, that didn't make the grade. Uh, so anyhow, I kind of came through here and just kind of looked at the various images that are available. And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever suits you, suits you. And this is the image that we uh, wound up doing. I just liked the way the cross was positioned on top of the Bible, and of course we had that little ribbon there. Um, so those are little things that I cued in on. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and right-click and copy this image, come over into CorelDRAW, and we're going to paste it. Now, this image is probably uh, what I would consider medium difficulty, and nothing is really that complicated. Uh, when somebody explains the process and that's usually the biggest thing when you're starting with rhinestone design it's, it's not that the various different programs don't work very well it's that there's not a lot of information on how to use those programs um, so this I think will be really enlightening because it's very very uh, easy to do and we're going to put this together very quickly but we have some specialized tools here in CorelDRAW that's going to make the process a lot easier so the first thing that we really need to do is we need to set the size of our image. So we're going to select our bitmap here, come over to our specialty tab, where we have a special function that does that for us. So we're going to hit set size, and we're going to pick two points on our graphic. And basically those two points that we selected represent the farthest leftmost point and the farthest rightmost point. It doesn't matter which one you pick first, right or left, doesn't matter. Um, Usually I go left to right, but honestly it doesn't matter. So you can see right now that this image overall width is 9.5. Well, we need it to be 7 because that's what the customer requested. So we're going to hit resize. And now our bitmap, if I were to draw a line from the same two points that I just did, and we look up here in CorelDRAW, you can see 7 inches wide. Pretty cool stuff, right? So, very good. All right, so the next thing we should take a look at is, is kind of setting, anchoring the design so we can't accidentally move it. And we do that using our special transparency tool here in CorelDRAW. Now, this is a custom toolbar that is available for download on the website for CorelDRAW X5 and X6. Um, so you can download it, install it, and you'll have all these buttons. Um, but all these things exist in CorelDRAW already. This isn't something that we invented. Um, so anyhow, the transparency tool here in CorelDRAW come over here to uniform transparency and the amount of transparency is up to you but I usually use about 80 percent okay and then once I've done that I am just gonna right click on my image and lock it and now I can't I can't click on it, I can't move it can't interact with it in any way which is what we want alright so where to begin with the image well where you begin is really up to you as the designer but for me I'm gonna start with the cross and we're going to take advantage of our Easy Guides tool because it's got some neat functions in here that don't exist in CorelDRAW um, and it's really going to help us create this artwork. So first thing we're going to do is create a series of guidelines that kind of represent our cross here. So what we're going to do is click on Guided Angle and just click two points on our cross and see how that guideline was now created at the same angle as that cross. So we're going to pick up our guideline, right-click to make a duplicate of it. And now you can see we have the width of our cross defined. And now we need a guideline going the other direction. So guided angle, click, click.
click and that sets a guideline at that angle and then we're going to just duplicate it duplicate it up here if we want to and we're going to duplicate it down here like so okay something like that and these really are just guidelines <laughs> just that just some geometry that we put in there so when we go to do our design work which we're going to do here momentarily we have something to go by all right so now that we've done that what we're going to do is go back over here to easy stone and we're going to go to the stone tab and we're going to hit shift drop stone and what that does is it allows me to just click a point and drop a stone that's that's its only purpose um, and once I have one stone here, I'm just going to position it right there at the intersecting point of those guidelines that we just created. And then I'm going to duplicate it. So I left click, drag, right click, make a duplicate and position it at this intersection. Now I want it to fill the in between. So we're going to select both of those stones and hit shift add stones to fill the in between. Okay. So now that we have this group, we're going to come down here and we are going to position it at this intersecting point on the guidelines now right now these stones are attached to a path okay so what we're going to do is we're going to select both of them and hit break stones or actually delete stone paths we don't need the paths anymore and we're going to select this first rhinestone come down here shift key select the second one shift key add stones and what that does again is it calculates all the stones required in between so now that we have this little bead of stones here we're going to um, make some duplicates so we're just gonna come here and we are going to pick this uh, stone uh, bead of stones up and then right click to make a duplicate and then we can hover right over that center point to center point duplicate center point to center point love that snapping feature here in corral draw really makes it really easy for precision okay so now we have the first part of our cross complete now again all these stones are attached to a path yet so we're going to come in here delete stone paths because we need to interact with these stones on an individual basis now going across i would say horizontally we have four stones so going vertically, I want four stones as well. So what I would do here is select four stones, right? And I would select another one. This is what I call, what I like to call my anchor stone. So I'm going to hover over here to the center, and I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to hit space bar, center point, space bar, center point, space bar, center point, space bar, one more time. See how that works? Actually, I think we're going to have to go one more time, space bar. Okay, so now you can see how we kind of just made those horizontal stones go that way. And then we're kind of do the same thing in the other direction. So we're just going to select four stones here. We're going to grab an extra anchor stone on the back side. And then from the center to center to center to center. And all I'm doing is hitting the space bar. That's it. Once I get over to the center, I hit the space bar to make my duplicate. Now, obviously, I missed the stone here, but that's okay, because we'll just do it the other way. Okay, so I selected all those stones, grab an anchor stone, go from the center to center. See? So everything lines up nice and perfect. Great. Now, in this process, we, we picked up those anchor stones, right? In this process, we created a lot of extra stones that we actually don't need. Um, and I just want to point that out. Um, so let's go ahead and clear those guidelines to simplify our life a little bit. All right. So what the what next step then is to get rid of any duplicate stones that already exist on our cross. So if we go to the editing tab and click check spacing, it says there's 18 overlaps. Now there's none. Okay. If we select that again and choose check spacing, it would say there's no overlapping stones. Perfect. That's what we need. Now, the next thing we need to do is create this shadow effect, and that's the easy part. All right, so we're just going to select our cross here, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just drag all these stones over, right-click to make a duplicate. Then we're going to, for our purpose, we're just right now going to choose light sapphire and recolor them. So go to the stone tab, rename and fill. Now let's look at what we did. See, we have dark, 
we have light okay so let's select this and come back over here again and this you just have to kind of use your imagination but if we take this and slide it right here center to center now you can kind of see what this looks like I'm gonna do shift page down to move those light colored stones to the bottom okay and so now you can kind of see how this shadow is going to happen. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, right now we have, uh, let's see here. We're going to, yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's reposition this so it makes a bit more sense here. So let's take, and it does take a little bit of fiddling with. Let's see here how we want this to look. Let's go with that. And then let's go one more, I think. So let's look at it like that. All right, I think that looks good. All right, so, and again, we will just go ahead and push that down. So I'll do shift page down. There we go. So now we kind of have our shadow created. If I delete some of these extra stones, just right here at the end cap here. Just delete those couple of stones, like so. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna delete these stones here. So go ahead and select those, and we'll delete those. And we're just gonna copy over a couple of stones here, just to finish off this shadow effect. So let's go ahead and delete. I don't think we need that extra set there. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to to see um, the stones when they're sitting on top of our, our graphic here. But when we pull them over to the side, we'll be able, and then put a weed box behind them, we'll be able to see things a little bit easier. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and take our cross, pull it over to the side here, add a weed box behind it, and now we can kind of see what this is starting to look like. So we have an extra row here we don't need, okay? So you can see, pretty easy to create the front of our cross and then our shadow effect. All right, so now we're gonna come back over here and delete those stones. Now we can't see it, but there's a lot of overlapping stones here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select that, go back to our editing tab, check spacing like we did previously, 203 overlaps. So we go ahead and dispose of those. And if we want to, we can actually throw a weed box right behind our cross now just to get a look at it. So now we can kind of see what it looks like um, and, and kind of just get a feel for, for what it is we're doing there. And I like that, so we'll go ahead and delete that. All right, so what's the next step? Well, obviously the next step is to create our Bible. Now to create the Bible, we're going to create the Bible in much the same way that we created the cross. So the first thing we do need to do is add some guidelines. So we're going to click on Guided Angle, and we're going to click two points on our Bible on the back side here. That will add a guideline there. And then we're going to choose Guided Angle, do this one over here. And feel free to zoom in if we need to. Now I wasn't happy with that placement, so we'll just do it again. There you go, that's a little bit more exact. Same thing on the front edge. So we'll choose guided angle. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you know we're just using this as a guide. So it doesn't need to be real perfect. And then we'll do guided angle down here. Now you can kind of see this uh, doesn't quite line up. So what we'll do is we'll click guided angle and we'll now that guideline lines up a little bit better. All right, so that's kind of our basic geometry. Now, for the Bible, we're just going to do that. We're going to outline that. Um, and uh, I made the choice that I want the outline of my Bible to be SS16 stones. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to copy up some guidelines that we need to and copy down some guidelines that we need to. And now we kind of have things kind of the way we need them. We're going to create the lines that our stones are going to be applied to. 
So we're going to grab our two point line tool here and we can snap to the intersection of these guidelines. Okay. And I'm just going to click anywhere. Once I create one segment, click anywhere and then go and create the next segment. Click anywhere, create the next segment. Click anywhere, create the next segment. Very, very straightforward. Click anywhere, create the next segment. This one here, we're just going to kind of eyeball right there. Click anywhere. And this one, same thing. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. All right. So that kind of lays in our basic geometry for our Bible. So let's go ahead and clear out our guidelines. And we'll start applying some stones. So let's go over here to Easy Stone. We're going to switch to Crystal. We're going to switch to our SS16 size, which I use 4.4 millimeter. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Add Stones. And you can see it adds those SS16 stones right along that line. Same thing here. Add Stones right along that line. Add Stones right along that line. Add stones right along that line. Now, here we have one path and we have our cross is in the way. It's in, so we need to trim this. So, what we're going to do is go to our shape tool here, double click on our path on this side, double click on our path on that side. All that does is add two nodes. Then we're going to select those two nodes break at notes. And this piece in the middle, we can now delete. So now we just have this one piece, add nodes to it, and this piece on this side, add nodes to it. Same thing up top here, exact same process. Double click to grab our shape tool, add a node, add a node, select them both, editing, break at notes. We can then delete the middle one and we can add notes and add stones. Okay. Now over here, we're going to draw a three point curve because this is slightly curved and add stones that way. Now you see the gap. If we want to see if that can be closed in on, we can hit the up arrow and make that gap a little bit tighter. Add one more stone along that particular path. All right. So now it's looking pretty good. It's looking about the way I would expect, but we do have an issue here at this corner and we do have an issue here at this corner. So we're going to select our entire book, delete stone paths and look at this corner. What can we do? Well, what I would probably do is we can just nudge these stones a little bit for one. And I think we could cheat this enough. Just bump that stone out enough so it's not overlapping. Good enough, right? And then on this one, we would probably try to do the same thing. Can we move these stones enough? Just enough out of the way where we don't have that overlapping issue. Very, very straightforward. All right. So that all looks good. Now, the next little design element for this design is right here. These pages, if you can see this, these pages, the cover, if you actually put a book in front of you, you would see the cover is slightly larger than the pages. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. So what we need to do is kind of uh, replicate that, if you will. And the way we're going to do this is this way. We're going to select two objects. We're going to go to our easy guides, hit shift guide at angle. Remember earlier we just clicked on guided angle and then we had to click two points. Well, now we're going to use guided angle in a different way. We're going to hold shift guide at angle. And when we do that, it finds the center point of the two objects we had selected and applies a guideline. Pretty nifty. So we're going to go right to the edge of the books there. And then we're going to do the same thing this direction. Select two. 
shift guided angle, grab that newly created guideline, something like that. All right, then we're going to manually draw some paths. So just with our two point line tool, we'll draw a path like so, click anywhere, and then draw the path in the other direction. Right to the edge there. All right, so then we need to do the same thing as we did previously. Um, let's go ahead and clear out our guides. We have our path here. We need to cut it on both sides. Select both nodes. Break at nodes. Delete the middle one. And now for this, I'm going to change it up and use SS 10 stones just for the heck of it. So we'll hit add stones. I think the two stone sizes does add a little style to the design too. Okay. So now that kind of represents the edge of the pages. So let's go ahead and delete our stone pads again. Now we're just going to kind of, I, what I would probably do is just hand place these. I'm going to go ahead and select these stones and extend them just a bit. Select all of these. There we go. And again, we can kind of decide how we want this to look, whatever we think is going to look right. Sometimes you have to play with it a little bit to get it looked exactly the way you want to, but I think that'll be good enough. And I'm going to copy that one more stone over like so, I think. We'll try that. And now this corner, same same kind of thing. We're just going to kind of just do this manually because it's just a couple of stones. So just kind of represent that corner. And then same thing back here. We're going to add a couple just to represent that edge. Now, the last thing that we need to do is create this little ribbon. And that's going to be really easy to do because we're just going to take a couple of these existing stones here. We're going to copy them up a couple of times, I think. And let's go ahead and select all of them and give them a different color. And I think we're going to use Capri Blue. And hit Rename and Fill. There we go. And then we'll just copy these down. Just like that to create the ribbon. So now you can do it however you want to. Doesn't have to be exactly like the original. But I'll just slide these over a little bit. Whatever you want to do there. Okay, so now we have our little ribbon in place. And I'll tell you what I'll probably do here is I'm gonna move this stone down a little bit. Just to decrease that gap a little bit. Because we have the room with these stones, we'll get it nice and tight. All right. So you can make those little adjustments there. I think that's it, though. So let's go ahead and pull the design away from our bitmap so we can see it. We do need to run a check spacing on it to get rid of all the overlapping stones. And then we can throw a weed box around the back side and then we can kind of sit back and enjoy this design now what I might do is because I want to simplify the design this last sapphire that we did let's go ahead and mark one of those let's pick all those light sapphires up by the frill color and let's change all of those to crystal so we'll hit rename and fill so now all those our crystals. So we just have the two colors and nice looking little Bible design. So you can see it wasn't complicated, right? Uh, it was just kind of a step-by-step -step process and you follow that process and you can create some really good looking designs. Now what I would challenge you to do is to now 
add the flour on top yourself. Um, but at least you have the basics here. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and thanks for watching.